Beautifully placed. That was a long half volley. It was a delicate thump of the bat. Not much movement at all from Hansi Cronje, but his timing. And it sounded a good piece of wood out there too. One more run added uh, before play ceased for the day. 135 for four at the close. Men out, Barker 22, Kirsten 4, Callis Norton, Cullinan 16. And then that face-saving partnership between the skipper, Hansi Cronier, and Jonty Rhodes, 38 and 47 respectively. And the bowling figures, Fraser none for 38 and unlucky. Headley none for 24. Thought he was a bit short today. And Elam, no wicket for 17 from three overs. Dominic Cork, 14 overs, three maidens and four for 53. Highlights from Lords now on BBC Two in the second test between England and South Africa. injury left him out in the cold during England's winter tour of the West Indies, Dominic Cork began the revival of his test match career at Edgebaston. It was here at Lords yesterday, however, that he confirmed he really is back. Vital Cork continues his success. If England are to break the partnership of Johnny Rhodes and uh, Hansi Cronier, and if they're going to get themselves right back into this match. Well, welcome to the highlights of the second day of this Cornhill Test match at Lords. An unusual day yesterday with rain and inclement weather. Spoiled it a bit, but we did have that splendid partnership between the South African captain and Johnny Rhodes. This is the way it looks at the start of play on the second day. 135 for four, those four quick wickets. Barker, Kirsten, Callis and Cullinan, and uh, then Cronje 38 and Rhodes 47. Now the bowling figures for England, dominated there by Dominic Cork, 14 overs, three maidens, four for 53. He got a little tired towards the end, which is understandable because there were really only two bowlers used all the way through, and Fraser was definitely unlucky. England could have done much better than that, but uh, with that pitch settling down today, then uh, I anticipate it will be quite difficult out there for the England bowlers. David Gower is out in the centre of the ground now to tell us about the strip of turf. Well, I think this pitch played pretty much as predicted yesterday. You can see by these footmarks here, the bowlers haven't made too much of an impression on the surface. The surface is pretty hard. There are one or two dints, again, down on the seamer's length where Dominic Cork bowled so well yesterday. But basically, it's pretty much unmarked. And I think now that it's dried out a bit, and we've got the weather today to help it drying it to dry out even further, it's going to become a very good pitch over the next two or three days. So England need to make early progress again today into the South African batting. David Gower with his pitch report, and we join play now in the first over of the day. It's the fifth ball. Angus Fraser is the bowler from the pavilion end. Hansi Cronier is taking strike, and no runs have been added to the overnight score. <laughs> Well, he did that a number of times yesterday too. This is a beautiful delivery. First couple a bit short. Hansi Cronje on the back foot, and look at the footwork there. Really, in not a good position, and that's a very good delivery from Angus Fraser. Just watch the uh, footwork there.
Well, they tend to think Hansi has a bit of a weakness against uh, a good short pitcher. Perhaps that wasn't quite so good. Yesterday they were carrying umbrellas. Some of them were wearing raincoats, some Wellington boots. Now it's all shirt sleeves and uh, shorts. Shirt sleeves for Raymond Illingworth. Long way forward. And uh, worth a shout. That's the one that doesn't go away. Hansi Cronier, long, long way forward here. It's probably hit him in line and hit him on the way up. That would have certainly gone well over the stumps. Enthusiastic appeal, but that's all it was. That's well, bold. He drew him into the shot, and Rhodes couldn't stop himself then. Very good bowling. He's made him play two. They've been pretty straight. Now you just see this one a little wider. And that's very good thinking and very good bowling from Angus Fraser. Yes. A good shot. Just the pace taken off it by Robert Croft. Yes. Half century for Jonty Rhodes. And that is a very good innings. Came in and attacked where defence might have been on uh, the score sheet for a lot of people. It's that partnership between Jonty Rhodes and Hansi Cronier. It's uh, exactly 100 now. 46 for four when they came together. That is on fire. That's a great shot. Half volley. That's 50 runs for Hansi Cronier. And a nice solid way to get there. Oh, well, that's uh, close. Uh, strange uh, decision from Hansi Cronier, whose heart must have been in his mouth as the appeal went up. Well, I think he's uh, completely lost it here because he's playing no shot and. Uh, Probably George Sharp saying it's going down the leg side, but he then started to set off for a single or a leg by. It's obviously if you uh, don't play a shot, you can't take. So just for a moment, uh, Hansi Cronier perhaps just wrapped up in reaching a significant milestone in getting to his 50. Well, Lords is certainly a picture today. Another full house. That means there are around about 30,000 people here today enjoying the sunshine, a very different day to yesterday that was so grey and unpleasant, but also different today is the uh, the cricket. Well, that's uh, not far away. It's going to run down to the fine leg boundary for four, but it's come through off the inside edge. Good shot. That's, there is a man out there. Uh, he's not going to get to it. Steve James. Chanty Rose is uh, so quick onto these. There's no great pace in the pitch, and he seemed to have all the time he needed just to play this shot away in front of square. Dean Headley is coming on now, and he's bowling from the nursery end. Beautifully straight. Just had to check back on the shot a little bit, but he's timed it well enough. And uh, Robert Croft certainly can't catch it. That's four runs. That's misdirected by Dominic Cork, and uh, his man on the leg side boundary is much squarer. One or two groans in the crowd, but uh, nothing to worry about. It was always dropping short. It was uh, not a chance. Well, I think straight off the pad here, a little bit of extra bounce from Dominic Cork. Oh. 
beautifully bowled. Beautifully bowled. There is a considerable slope out there, and uh, Hansi Cronje, who's played well, has been quick onto the front foot, and here Rhodes is just on the inside. You sort of expect the ball to come into you all the time, but uh, in fact that went straight on. This is not very good bowling from Dean Headley. Just straight down the leg side. Well, that was terrific running, Barry, wasn't it? These two have a real good understanding. They've played South African schools together. They've played a lot of cricket together, obviously, over the years. Oh, well bowled. A better ball. And that's the chance of getting him out. It's playing at the wide ball that John T. Rhodes has a little bit of a tendency to do. That's a convincing shot, all right. Another great example of how you go back, you go right back. You create time, you find time, and you've got a lovely swing of the bat outside the off stump. That was a big shot for LBW, but it's also a big stride down the pitch by John T. Rhodes. Too far forward. And uh, correct decision by umpire Hare, Daryl Hare from Sydney, Australia. It's probably pitched in line and well worth the shot, but he is a long way forward. And uh, I guess it's difficult to give that out. 191 for four now. And it's a very good performance indeed by Hansi Cronier, the captain. John T. Rhodes, 78 not out. And um, I have to keep reminding you it was 46 for four, which is a very strong position. Excellent South African batting for the moment. 150 partnership comes up. That's good fielding all around there. 200 up for South Africa though, 201 for four. Splendid partnership. Fine shot. Well, in the first over from uh, Robert Croft, he was inclined to straight to the leg side. It's um, quite easy to do that when you're bowling spin from the pavilion end. It's just that little slope on the ground. And uh, just as bad as being around about middle, middle and leg, and of a full length is to be short outside off stump, particularly if you've got a fellow who square cuts so well. Uh, convincing of shots that from John T. Rhodes. Perhaps even a top edge that has gone up and hit him on the chin. I think he decided almost premeditatedly to play that shot. But certainly a top edge. And there it is again. Doesn't need to be over short because. Uh, John D. Rhodes is a very strong cutter, either square of the wicket or preferably for him uh, just behind point. Plays it beautifully. There's uh, old father time. Just change sides of the ground. He used to be on top of the grandstand. He's now next to the mound stand on top of the new scoreboard. I wonder if he likes what he sees. Good shot for four. Yes, there's plenty there yesterday for the bowlers, and uh, they made best use of it. And now Mark Elam has his first chance of the day with the ball from the pavilion end. Three overs last night, none for 17. Well, uh, this is a very bold move by uh, England captain uh, Alex Stewart. I know many captains, uh, both at county level and international level, would, uh, after a, a session like they had this morning, said to his two most experienced and most potent uh, strike force bowlers, you have a bowl after lunch. That would, uh, in England's case, be Cork and Fraser. But he's plumped for Headley and Elam.
Good work from Ramprakash. But uh, Hansi Kronje is still not quite timing this ball consistently. He's hit it fairly hard into the ground and uh, it looked a reasonable shot, but he's just about 5-10% off. Good slower ball there too. That's a well-disguised change of pace. And Jonty Rhodes nearly threw the shot. It was definitely a leading edge. Just look here at the uh, list of best individual scores at Lords for the South Africans. If you go back to 1935 for the the highest there. That's out. That's the breakthrough that they needed. Mark Elam has the wicket, and I suppose it's entirely right that Hansi Cronier gets out in that way. He's uh, been mistiming the ball, he's struggled his way through, made a good 81, but he just leant back a bit on that, hit it hard but straight at the field of Mark Ramprakash, and that's just what England needed at this stage. Late in the day, it seems, but they've got the wicket. Well, full credit to Alex Stewart here. He's given Mark Elam uh, his first opportunity of the day, and Mark Elam has responded very well. So it's all round of time now. Sean Pollock is the new batsman. He's been waiting patiently all day. Well, that's given George Sharp plenty to think about. Good delivery. Might just have been an inside edge. Well, they almost uh, sounded like there were two noises, but that's ever so close. And if there weren't two noises, I can't really see where that was uh, going, aside from uh, straight onto middle stump. Well, it doesn't look as though it's hit the bat. And I think Dean Headley can feel a little bit uh, upset at not getting the decision there. Well, that's, uh, I think, come clanging off the helmet. Yep, uh, signal leg buys. And uh, considering that ball has gone 20, 30 yards out to mid-wicket, gives you a clue as to how hard that's hit the helmet. That's hit the bat and hard. It's uh, dropping short of the boundary. Nonetheless, it's enough to take Jonty Rhodes through to 100. Three runs, that pull over mid-wicket. He's reached uh, what must be every visiting cricketer's dream. 100 at Lords, and none of those boys are going to regret him that. He's played beautifully for South Africa, both in the first test in Birmingham and now here at Lords. That's going to be four runs. Sean Pollock off the mark. A wonderful knock by Jonty Rhodes. His job's not over yet. South Africa not quite out the woods. They'll be a lot happier than they were when they were 46 for four, but Hansi Cronier and now Jonty Rhodes have done a wonderful job. Oh, that'll be very close. The feet jammed together on the crease there. Gone absolutely nowhere. One we find just coming back, but just bouncing a little high. Well bowled, and that's a beautiful line. Excellent line. No progress made onto the front foot. Well, just from the naked eye, I don't think there's a better ball being bowled all day than this one. And this is just a perfect delivery. There you see, uh, that gives you a good profile of the innings with this huge partnership of 184, Rhodes and Cronier. Really restoring the balance, repairing the damage and putting South Africa ahead. Big shot for LBW and certainly John D. Rhodes moved across in front of his stumps there. 250s up. Oh, 
Oof. Well, he's unlucky now. I think um, he's beaten the bat too many times to be kind. He really is varying his pace very well. That was a lot quicker. Really surprised Sean Pollock. Plenty of effort went into it. And he's had to hurry his shot. Well, this is the frustration for uh, spin bowlers. If that was a seam bowler, that would be regarded as being very close. Just gone back up the hill, fractionally, struck the pad. But as a slow bowler, there is a, an element of doubt put on the in the minds of the umpire. Angus Fraser is going to take the ball straight away. Off the pad, but it goes on to the total. He's jagged a couple back in at the batsman. First of all, that very good ball to Jonty Rhodes. And then he's got the one to go away and has picked up the wicket of Sean Pollock. Nasser Hussain took the catch and it was a good sharp one too. But that is splendid bowling and it's a five wicket haul for Dominic Cork once again. And Sean Pollock just looking to play this on the onside, closing the face of the bat. And a nicely taken catch there by Nasser Hussain. Just the sort of breakthrough that England needed with this second new ball. Mark Boucher, who is the uh, new batsman, is uh, that one's a real eye opener for him. That's uh, very well played. Nice way for Boucher to get off the mark. Angus Fraser now operating from the pavilion end. Well, that's through Jonty Rhodes. It's the inside edge. Well, it's a change of fortune for Angus Fraser. And the end of an awfully good innings from Jonty Rhodes. A little puff of the cheeks as... Uh, he strides off. But he's provided this Lord's crowd with some wonderful entertainment. <laughs> Fully deserving the standing ovation from the MCC members and all here at Lords today. And this is well deserved from Angus Fraser with the second new ball. You see it just darting back. It's just flicked the inside edge. You can see the ooh on John T. Rhodes' face. And Alex Stewart takes a very neat catch. Beautiful delivery. Lance Klusner. Somewhere there is the new man. And he batted very well indeed in that first test match as well. Inside edge is going to get four for it. Exasperated expression on Dominic Cork's face. You can see from stump cam here how close this gets to the stumps. Very close indeed. Bat well away from the foot. And he's very lucky to get four runs there. That's more like the uh, Lance Klusner we saw in the first test. A very simple straight bat. Nicely timed. And a very solid shot brings up the 300. That's a good shot. There's no justice for uh, Angus Fraser. He's tried to get that one up for the Yorker, and Boucher has taken full toll of it. A wonderful stroke. He's laid back, just put his ears back on that. 
and fairly belted it away off the back foot. Well, and they're likely to go on for some time yet. I get the feeling that uh, the attitude of the South African captain is, well, you stuck us in, you bowl us out. Beautiful balls. Yep, the perfect Yorker from Dean Headley. Right in at the base of the stumps, and uh, Lance Klusner could do nothing about it. Once again, Lance Klusner has added uh, a very useful contribution to the South African batting. 34 runs before this. That's an inside edge onto the uh, onto the pad, deflected it on. Now, what England need is to uh, finish off this tail as quickly as possible. Alan Donald is the, the new batsman, or should be the new batsman, and is. Right, short legs in, two slips in the gully. Uh, there goes the bouncer, awkward one for Alan Donald, who will not forget that, as and when he has a go at uh, Dean Headley later in the game. Well, one fast bowler to another. That's flicked away. Well, interestingly, we don't uh, normally see one fast bowler shouting at another one to uh, bowl him another one. But uh, I don't think there's any love lost between Alan Donald and Dean Headley. He really is uh, pumped up and fired up for this occasion. That's... Uh, Four runs, no doubt about that. The 350 comes up for South Africa. 352 for eight after being at 46 for four. That really is a very good fighting effort. And there's a big shout, and that's out. Up goes the finger. A little nick, Alex Stewart, beautifully in position down the leg side. And the ninth wicket is down for 3.53. And a slight deflection through to uh, wicketkeeper Alex Stewart, who took a very nice catch. But just a little bit of extra pace was the undoing here for Mark Boucher. And a very fine bit of bowling by Dean Headley. Paul Adams is the new batsman and the last batsman. And that's four runs. Racing away down to the pavilion and leg buys. No chance for Alex Stewart to stop that. Nice and cool on top of that stand, I guess. It's been very hot and uh, quite humid in parts. And that's caught and beautifully caught by Alex Stewart. Really is the most agile man. Paul Adams just following that ball from Cork. It's Cork six wicket. 360 is the total. And he's got it in the right spot. And Paul Adams just getting a nice faint nick, just adjusting in time. And that just carrying to Alex Stewart, who did very well to come a little bit forward. So a very good uh, catch. And 360 all out South Africa. 360 all out and that's a very good performance from South Africa when you think they were 46 for four early on the first day. 81 for Hansi Cronier, 117 for Jonty Rhodes and then good performances from Mark Boucher 35 and Lance Klusner 34. 27 extras and 360 and the bowling figures for England once again an outstanding effort from Dominic Cork. 31.1 overs, five maidens, six for 119. Angus Fraser could have had better figures, one for 78. Headley 2 for 69, Elam 1 for 50, I thought uh, he did pretty well, he moved the ball nicely in the air, 15 overs for the 50 runs and the one wicket, and Robert Croft didn't get much out of the pitch, 9 overs, 3 maidens, and none for 23. We're going to join play now in uh, the England innings, it's the fifth ball of the first over, Alan Donald is bowling, Steve James making his debut, is taking strike, no runs on the board. It's a run, but it might be uh, 
not off the bat. Let's take a look at the umpire. It appears to be probably off the glove. Very dull sound. I think you'll be very happy with that. I think the replay will show that it probably hit the uh, arm. But uh, whatever happens, he's got to run. I think it hit just above the glove. That's a perfectly good run. That's no, a, an excellent a, run. That's a Welsh run. Straight off it? the glove. <laughs> You'd be proud of that. Off the mark in test cricket. And those are runs, gone down fine leg. Gentle pace and Pollock. Off the pad that time. Four leg buys. So England five for no wicket. It's a beautiful stroke. There are lots of people around this ground with Welsh connections will be shouting good boy. Nine for no wicket now. That's a good shot. Nicely played. You can say that uh, he's reasonably strong on his pads. Well, I think the crowd appreciating uh, the nerves that there might be for a first test match innings. Rather a, a mixed sort of appeal from the keeper and slips. And the bowler followed on. Well, it was a very good delivery. Good seam straight up as it was coming down after leaving Pollock's hand. Yes! Ah, there's the first one. That looked as though uh, it took Atherton by surprise a little bit quicker and getting up at him and it's flown very very gently away to the slip area Kirsten the man taking the catch Atherton a duck and problems for England oh what a catch what a magnificent catch Boucher has caught some beauties here. He's uh, dropped the ball occasionally, but that was a wonderful catch to get rid of Steve James. He deflected it down the leg side of Alan Donald, and Boucher has made what seemed like yards. Well, a major catastrophe this for England. They lost one, but uh, they didn't want to lose a second one quickly, and this is exactly what's happened. Real World Cup stuff there. Wonderful dive away to his left, and Alex Stewart, the man, coming out now. James caught Boucher, bowl Donald, 10. Atherton caught Kirsten, bowl Pollock, no score. It's a better time stroke. there to Stewart, 20 for two, and that'll allow him to keep the strike. It was the last ball of the over. Oh. It was very well bowled. There's a little nod of uh, appreciation there from uh, Alex Stewart. Oh, good leg cutter. Well, that's uh, perilously close. Not out in the opinions of uh, well, the opinion of George Sharp. Close call for Nasser Hussein. Well, he's not really anywhere. Did this pitch outside leg? Maybe just because I couldn't see that. Well, perhaps high, is it? Beautifully bowled.
four runs, just opened the face on it, but stroked it away nicely. Very good shot. Just a little bit too full, but Nasser Hussain getting in a good position. Just to show you how the pace has risen slightly, 90, 90 miles an hour, that delivery. Great bowling. Nasser Hussain hasn't moved yet. He's uh, we held the shot for a good three or four seconds. Got no real danger of getting an edge on it. <laughs> Ten hundreds, twenty-seven fifties. Same sort of ratio as Michael Atherton. Come on. Chase here for Alan Donald, which. Uh, it's going to prove fruitless. Very good shot. Pollock looking for that one to just straighten from a, a middle stump. But he's drifted down the leg side and Alex Stewart has played just a magnificent shot. Great shot. Hammered away. That was uh, emphatic. I'll give you a clue just how good it was. Uh, John D. Rhodes at cover stood there mesmerised, looking for the ball, never saw it. Beautiful shot, he really launched himself into that. Donald bowled it at 88, and it probably went off at about 125. Got away with it. Uh, it's going to be four runs. He was stretching for the ball. And uh, edged it away through the cordon. That's out this time. Kept low as well. And uh, Alex Stewart threw his head back in despair as the finger went up. 40 for three. Absolutely plum. It's just shot along the ground. It didn't actually get up much. It's always a difficult situation when you come in. You're looking to defend all the time. Big step across, pitches on, and would have knocked middle stump straight out the ground. Could not do anything else but give that out. Absolutely plum. Dean Headley came out as night watchman, and uh, no more runs added. It stayed at 40 for three. Problems there for England. A very nasty time to have to go in. And the men out, James for 10. Atherton, no score and Stewart, LBW to Pollock for 14. Two bowlers used, Donald bowled with great pace, got plenty of bounce, a bit of movement as well, seven overs, two maidens, one for 15. Sean Pollock, after an untidy start, bowled really well towards the end, six overs, no maiden, and two for 20, and those three wickets down uh, raise a little bit of a question mark against England, 40 for three, Pollock two for 20, and South Africa, 360 all out after being put into bat. England. 320 runs behind at the moment. We'll be back here at Lord's in Grandstand, 10.45 a.m. tomorrow, and we look forward to having you with us then. For the moment, though, we're going to leave you with Jaunty Rhodes. Jaunty, when he was chosen in the South African side, had a big query against his name in various areas in South Africa. Why is he going, some people were saying. They thought that he might be just a bit over the hill. Played beautifully in the limited overs games, and Edge Baston made the runs necessary to avoid the follow-on. Here at Lords, a century. Absolutely magnificent. Strong on the offside, John T. Rhodes. Not bad on the leg side either. Just uh, played that one beautifully through mid wicket. And then when he drops short, he's always looking for that one. That's uh, the first one into the new grandstand. Christen that nicely.